you know, when the Lord first spoke to me about rapping with or talking to or sharing the Word of God with young people, I thought, uh-uh. <laughs> now me, man, you got the wrong dude. <laughs> Check it out. You're looking at you-know-who. You think I'm going to go ahead and tell some young people about, you know, God? I don't think so. I have a hard enough time telling, well, anyways, I just have a hard enough time, period. <laughs> it's like, hey, no way, Jack. You know, you figure that one back because, you know what, you got Holy Spirit, you got angels, you got men of God, you got women of God, you got the whole world in your hands. You could pick someone else. Not me, man. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm chilling. So, of course, you know how well that conversation went. It didn't go so good. As a matter of fact, it was kind of like, I was tripping out because I went out, you know, and I was thinking there's no way that I'm ever going to sit down and explain to a bunch of kids, you know, kind of what's going on with God. Because, quite frankly, I'm one of God's biggest kids and I'm still trying to figure out what's going on. You know, I don't know what it's all about. So, God said, I don't expect you to. I went, well, duh, I'm not God, and there's no way I could understand this. So, I'm not sure what you got going, God, but when I went to a used store, you know, I was kind of like checking out the scene, you know, and I was looking for furniture, because that's kind of what I do, you know, it's like I go to used stores, you know, and I look for really nice stuff, you know, okay, you know, maybe not so nice sometimes, but most of the time I get really nice stuff, you know, nice stuff the way I think of nice. <laughs> you might not think it's so nice. But the reality of what I do is I go you know, shopping and I'm pretty cheap. You know, I don't have a lot of money. So, you know, like I always say, I don't got a lot of money, honey. So I got to check it, you know, and look for it, you know, and find it because it ain't going to cost me much because if it does, I ain't going to get it. That's just the way it is. But I got a lot of junk stuff, you know, good stuff. And I, the way I find those things is, you know, I go out looking, you know, and it's kind of like God leads me, you know, and I kind of find it, you know, God blesses me, you know, and I kind of enjoy it, and God uses it, and, well, long story short, that's how I wound up here. You know, God blessed me, God found it for me, God directed it, God instructed it, and God said it, and now I'm doing it. Oh, well. But, you know, God inspired me with something that I learned along the way that, you know, by the way, it's kind of hot, so, you know, kind of like, chilling here, you know, or let's just say I'm trying to cool off. Whew, man, you know, if this is autumn, I want to know where fall went. <laughs> it's hot out. But what I've been doing is that, you know, whenever I really wanted to know something, I always found a book. You know, it's kind of like the Bible, you know, whenever, oh, speaking of Bibles, that's right, I'm going to need a Bible because in here they always make us read the Bible first. And then talk about it, you know, with whatever he's saying. Josh McDowell, that is. So, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going on the other side of this camera. And I'm going to grab my Bible. Because you know what? Me trying to remember the Bible, I have no clue what's in here. Okay. Maybe I have a little clue. But as blind as I am, I got a big Bible. You know, the other reason I got a big Bible is because I'm a big sinner. <laughs> Some people need big Bibles because of the sin they're in. Oh, well. So, in finding this book and discovering just, you know, kind of like flipping through it, you know, I went, oh, man, you know, I don't want to do that, you know. So God says, well, think of it this way. You're dealing with becoming like little children, right? And I went, yeah. And, you know, except you become as little children, you'll not enter the kingdom of heaven. And I went, yeah, and he said, you know, that suffer the little children coming to me for such a king of heaven, you know, and that, you know, blah, 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 and I went, oh, yeah, you get the point yet? No. <laughs> he said, be young at heart. Oh, so really, this isn't like for youth only, this is for like anybody young at heart. Eh, that sounds like a commercial. We're doing a little advertising, Michael. Oh, okay, I get it. So, this isn't only for young people, and it isn't only for kids, but it's for, like, kids of the kingdom. Hey, I could deal with that one. You know, like, sons and daughters of God. Ooh, I could go with that one. You know, it's kind of like for anybody, anywhere, anytime. 
hey, I like that, you know, because then there might be someone just as stupid as I am out there because, well, after all, all the young people know so much more than I know because they tell me so. <laughs> right? Okay, maybe not. But, you know, I've been around a little while, you know, and I'm still kind of like, you know, 40 years old, you know, as a Christian, but I'm still kind of like, hey, dude, you know, check it, man. You know, I'm not telling you you got to straighten up. I'm not telling you you got to clean up. I'm telling you that God's going to do it to you. Because guess what? You don't participate in it. It's going to happen to you <laughs> one way or another. So I like to think of it as let's find out what could be a better way than the way we might say today to be the way we are. Because after all, I like to look at finding things the easy way than finding them out the hard way. So maybe today we'll find out something that'll make it a little easier to get through this thing called life with some instructions as opposed to having some obstructions in life that seem to cause us to get frustrated and aggravated and, you know, discombobulated with what's going on in life. Me personally, I think that I got an eternity to live, so, you know, I want to get on with it. So looking at this, you know, I'm beginning to discover that, you know, God wasn't so far-fetched when he said that, you know, except you become his little children, because quite frankly, I'm still trying to figure it out. And I know that I ain't out and about looking like I'm some kind of perfection or anything. You know, I'm just kind of working it out every day as I learn about what God has for me to do today. Did you get that? <laughs> wow, that came out of my mouth. Ooh, dude, check it. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Can I record that and write that down? I should, I should copyright it. You know, I should record it. I should make a demo. You know, I should sell it. I should, you know, like be on YouTube. Oh, wait a minute. I think I am. Doubting the goodness of God. Bible reading from Genesis 3, 1 through 6. Hey, I know where Genesis is. That's next to, you know, like that recording group, you know, um, Nirvana and Genesis. Well, anyways, Genesis is in the Bible, the one we're looking at, not the one we're listening to. And uh, we're going back a few years, you know, to the very beginning. And I don't mean of the rock and roll age or hard rock. But going back to Genesis, we're going all the way back to 3, which I have no idea what that is. Because, you know, the Bible didn't come with, you know, instructions that said, these are the chapters. But later, when they started printing them, they started adding them. Just a little side note. So somewhere in chapter 3, verse 1 through 6, we're going to read, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Woman? <laughs> Anyways. said to the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that a tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant for the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, check it out, man, they were rapping back and japping back back in those days. Yeah, you know, they had down their rap, you know, or at least they thought they did, till they did what they did, but they wound up doing what they didn't do, because they found out that it wasn't so good to be food. Oh, well, sometimes, you know, you taste it, you like it. Mikey will eat it, but guess what? Mikey wasn't around at the time, so she had to eat it. Ew. Didn't taste so good. And so she did eat and gave also to her husband and with her, and he did eat. So what's Josh got to say? Because I ain't Josh about this. This is a Josh McDowell youth devotional. So we're checking it, you know. And it says, no good thing will the Lord withhold from those who do what is right in Psalm 84.11. The story of the first sin ever... Ooh, imagine being the first one ever. Yeah. I don't think that was like, you know, the best thing to happen or be remembered for. The story of the first sin ever committed is recorded in today's Bible reading. The story reports what the serpent said to Eve and what Eve said to the serpent. But have you ever wondered what the tempter and his victim were thinking as they talked? Maybe their thoughts went something like this. It's a noise. It's out. Listening. But as we watch that helicopter go fly by, 
in the night or the day. Really, the serpent asked the woman, let me see. I think I'll start by getting her confused about what God has said. Did God really say you must not eat of this fruit in the garden? Of course we may eat, the woman told him. This serpent really bugs me. He acts like he knows so much. Well, I'll show him. It's not only the fruit from the tree at the center of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. Let's see, what did God say again? Hmm, seems so long ago, now that I think about it. God says we must not eat it or even touch it or we'll die. At least, it, it was something like that. Okay, let's plant a little doubt in her mind. You won't die, the serpent hissed. Come to think of it, a little jealousy wouldn't hurt either. God knows that your eye will be open when you eat it. Yeah, that's the ticket. Make her think that God's keeping something from her. She'll want to know a secret. You want to know a secret? You will become just like God, knowing everything, both good and evil. Yeah, I'll tell you in on the secret. The woman was convinced. Maybe God is trying to hide something from me. Maybe he gave me that command to keep me from having fun. The fruit looked so fresh and delicious, and it would make her so wise. So she ate it. She ate some of the fruit anyways. Now maybe that's how it happened with Eve, and maybe it's not. We don't know what she was thinking. Either way, it was stinking thinking. The fruit looked so fresh and delicious, and it would make her so wise, so she ate some of the fruit, and maybe that's what caught her eye. The goodness of God is often the first step toward making the wrong choice, or doubting the goodness of God in this case. Now, maybe that's, maybe times people act like God gave his command because he doesn't want them to have any fun. Maybe they think that God is like a do's, or maybe they think God is only about don'ts. Maybe he doesn't have a better way because he's telling you one way instead of the other way. Hmm. Anyway, they think that the only way they can have fun or get what they want is by ignoring God's commands. But the Bible says, no good thing will the Lord withhold from those who do what is right. No good thing. No goodies will be withheld. No good thing. No good good. No, you know, you know what good is, right? It's good. It ain't bad, and it ain't sad, and it ain't something that's got a mixture bag, you know, that's kind of like a mixed bag of good and bad. No, it's good. They're the goodies. <laughs> Get it? Okay, maybe not. You see, God is good. He wants to give every good thing there is. The problem is, we often think that God withholds good things from us by commanding us to do this and don't do that. But that's not true. He will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. If we truly believe that, then the wrong choices won't be so tempting, because the wrong choices will prove what is right. And if proof comes in, all of a sudden discovering that the wrong choice really was the wrong choice. On reflection, it says, have you ever felt like God's commands keep you from getting what you want or kept you from having fun? Well, yeah, I've felt that way sometimes. Do you think it would be easier for you to obey God if you really believed Psalm 8411? You know, the one that says, no good thing will the Lord withhold from those who do what is right? Well, yeah, because I kind of get confused between what God says and what Mom says and what Dad says. Oh, wait a minute, my Mom and Dad are gone. Um, I kind of get confused about what people say as opposed to what God says. So maybe I should check out what God says. No good thing will He withhold from those that do what is right. Oh, well, that's a little different than the do's and don'ts. Maybe I should do what is right so I get the goodies. I kind of like the idea of getting goodies. So why or why not do you think it would be easier for you to obey God if you believed that no good thing will he withhold from them that do good? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Pray, God, I know you are good and that you won't withhold any good thing from those who do what is right. Help me, please, from now on, to really believe in your goodness and to remember that I can't get good things through bad choices. Amen. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't think it's rocket science, you know? I really don't. I don't think it takes a genius to figure out what God is about. If he's created this mess, and it, it looks like a mess now, then I think he knows how to fix the mess. I mean, quite frankly, since he said he could fix it. 
And if when I look at one group and I look at them and they don't look like they got it, and I look at another group and they don't look like they got it, then I think I need to go to God to find out if he's got it. Because it looks like neither group's got it. So I personally don't let you in on a secret about me and God. We like to talk about it, you know. We like to get kind of like close enough to each other so that we kind of discover, you know, what it is that he's about so that I can know what I'm about so that I can go about doing what he's about because I already know what I'm about and I don't know what I'm all about because I'm still trying to figure out what that's about. So, I don't know, but that's kind of why I think he's called God and why I'm called not God. And that's kind of why I like having a God or the God who really cares about me. Because you see, once I've discovered that, and I have, then I, I, I realize that he is all about caring for me and withholding no good thing from me when I do right. So that I can no longer be Mr. Do Wrong, but I can be shiny as Mr. Do Right. So, I don't know about you, but I think I'm checking out today about being the Do Writer, you know, instead of the Night Writer. And I'm going to go about doing right, rather than doing wrong and finding out that the sad song is a sad song. Because somehow they don't belong with those that do right, but they do belong to those that, dare I say it? do wrong. <laughs> oh well, I guess I still got some growing up to do, because I know I still have some learning to do. And I hope that maybe today you find, in your way, in this next generation that you are, that you can do right and do more and do often that which is right in God's sight, more so than my generation ever thought of or ever dreamed of or imagined to see, because I got news for you. In this next generation, we get to see eternity. And you're going to find it one way or another, whether in heaven or whether in hell. So I'd rather you do right to find out what might be just something that you want to enjoy instead of finding when you do wrong, it's someplace you don't want to be. And it's just like a country song. It ain't going to turn out.